Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is risk management. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction. You can find all the supporting information and links to that information in the video description below. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda, which consists of four items. You can see those items in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video for the three bonus questions. Our requirement today, risk management, comes directly from 820.30G and ISO 1345 sections 7.1, 7.3.3, .3, and 7.3.9. Risk management in five words. Use risk management, maximize safety. When we look at 820, risk analysis is only referenced one time in the design validation section. That is because the final rule for the QSR was issued in 1996, and that was the terminology used then. Just because it's only referenced once does not mean that the FDA does not want us to use risk management through the entire product life cycle. ISO 1345, having been updated in 2016, contains much more modern language around risk management. In section 7.1, they clearly say you will use risk management through the entire product life cycle. And then they point to the risk management standard, ISO 14971. In the design control section, you will see risk management identified as an input, so section 7.3.3, and you'll also see a reference to risk management in the design changes section, 7.3.9. To ensure that you meet the requirements for risk management in the medical device space, you should be using ISO 14971. 14971 has three main deliverables, a risk management plan, the risk analysis itself, and in a risk management report. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, risk management is used throughout the entire product lifecycle. You develop your risk management files during the design and development process. They are utilized in manufacturing to make decisions and in the post market. Second, residual risks, especially any unacceptable residual risks, are reviewed and approved by executive management before the product is put in the market. Finally, that post-market data is fed back into the design process. It's fed back into the risk management process. And you evaluate the frequency and occurrence of different types of defects against the estimates that you used during design and development. If anything is out of place or any new risks are identified, your risk management files are updated to capture that information. And then, if those updates require additional risk mitigation activities, that you undertake those activities. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, your risk management files are incomplete or they don't exist. Second, top management does not review the risk management report and therefore they don't know the risks related to your product. And then finally, post-market data is not fed back into your risk process and you're not consistently reviewing what's happening in the field and comparing it with what you estimated when you built your risk management files. Now, for those three bonus questions. First, what is our risk management procedure? Second, how do we ensure that, that risk management is actually fed into our design process, that the applicable outputs of risk management are treated as a design input? And then finally, how do we communicate all the residual risks to the executive management team before a product is launched. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.